Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, here's a special message for all the youngsters who listen to Lum and Abner. How many of you youngsters drink Horlicks malted milk? Quite a lot, I'll bet. It sure is a grand summer drink. If your mother doesn't have Horlicks in the house, here's what to do to get her to buy some. Just tell her that Horlicks malted milk is as fine a drink for children as she can possibly find. That it will make you big and strong and healthy, just like thousands of other youngsters who drink their Horlicks every day. And if that doesn't convince her, tell her that Horlicks malted milk is a mighty nourishing drink and so much easier for you to digest. Just tell her that, and I'm willing to bet that she'll get you a package right away. She can get it at her druggist, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor. Whichever you prefer. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner's picture show is progressing nicely. They have a crew of men remodeling the old cotton warehouse into an up-to-date theater. And last night, they made a trip into the county seat and purchased a second-hand projector with which to show their films. As we look in on our old friends today, we find them down at the Jot'em Down store making plans for the opening. Listen. Well, that gets everything but uh, piney now. Yeah. I-, I wish we could get along without that thing, Lum. That's going to run into money. Well, I ain't going to buy one, Abner. I'm going to rent that pi- player piney from Grandpappy Spears if I can. Yeah, but I- I'm just afraid you're going to run into trouble, Adam. He's awful close to traitors and pants. Yeah, but I've got a way studied up to handle him all right. You know, I get through talking to him, you'll be wanting to let us use it for nothing. Yeah. Well, he's back there in the feed room now if you want to talk to him about it. Yeah, call him up here. Now, just let me do the talking. Grandpa's pretty hard to deal with, you know. We've got to handle him just so. Yeah. yeah. If he knowed how bad we wanted it, why, he'd ask us three or four prices for it. Well, you got to use psychology on him. Uh, got to use what? Nothing. I'll use it. You just get him up here. Hey, Grandpa. Come on up to the front of the store here. Me and Lom wants to see you about... Don't the... tell him what you want with him. Something. Just let me handle it now. Oh, I ain't gonna say nothing. Are you hollering at me, Abner? Yeah, come on up here a minute. Yeah, I want to have a little talk with you, Grandpap. Sit down. Yeah, Lom's gonna use some psychology, don't Just you? Just hate up, Abner. What's the matter? Ain't my work been satisfaction? No. Your work has been fine, Grandpap. You're by fur the best clerk we've ever had in the store here. And I was just thinking, what a shame it is. Here you are, getting along in years and still working for wages. Yeah, you don't expect me to work for nothing, did you? No, but I mean, you're just living from day to day, you might say. You ought to have a regular income, something you could depend on in case you're laid up to where you couldn't work. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Nice something to have, all right. You just had something you could rent to somebody. So no matter where you worked or not, you'd still have money coming in all the time. Yeah, but I ain't got nothing nobody'd want to rent. Only thing I've got's my house, and if I rented that, I wouldn't have no place to live myself. Well, let's see. You ought to have something over where you could rent. Let's see. What have you got somebody might have some use for? Me think. Well, don't you know, Lonnie, it's that fair fine that he's got away. Abner, will you please have... Yeah, I, Granny, that's right. I hadn't thought about that. Glad you brung that up. Uh, what was that, Lum? Why, well, Abner here just now suggested you've got a player of piney over there you might could rent. Yeah. Yeah, I've got one over there, but I don't know who in the world would want to rent it. I know there ought to be somebody around here that has some use for that. Let me study. I'd love to help you if I can, Grandpa. I know somebody, Lum. Will you stay out of this, Abner? Uh-huh. All right, but I could save you all that thinking if you just let... Wait a minute. I believe I'm getting a idea. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hey, Granny Zabner, we ought to have some music of some kind down at the picture show of ours. Well, I'll be dead blamed, Lon. You're the forgetfulest fella I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I'm glad I thought of that. Yeah, me and Abner might find some use for that piney down there at the show, Grandpap. We've got to have some music of some kind down there. Yeah. Of course, we couldn't pay much for that, but uh, if it help you any out, well, we'd be glad to rent it off of you. Wouldn't we, Abner? Yeah, I reckon so. I don't know what to say now. You've got me so mixed up. Mixed up? 
Why, yes, me and you sat here and talked about the same thing not ten minutes ago, Lom, and now you don't appear to recollect a thing about it. How much would you, uh, I mean, uh, how little would you want to rent that for a grand bear? Oh, I don't know, Lom. I never had thought nothing about renting it. I'll think about it. You don't know what it's worth, hardly. Uh, who was you aiming on getting to play it? Well, I was talking some to Evelina about getting her to play it first. Her school's about out, and if she could find something like that to do, she could stay here all summer instead of going back over to Belleville with her folks. Well, uh, Lom, I, I was thinking on getting Pearl to play it. Well, I don't believe I'd want to let it out that way unless I'd done the playing of it myself. See, if a body's got to play one of them player pine, it's just it's so worried it don't sound right. Well, I thought all you had to do was just put a roll of music on there and pump them pedals up and down it played itself. That's just what I allowed you to say, Abner. Average fellow who don't know nothing about music would say the same thing. If you know the hours that I'll put in practicing on that thing. Practicing? Huh? Oh, I sure to play a player finer? I sure it is hard to play right as the other fan is. Oh. There's buttons around on it. You've got to know just when to press them and all that. You've got to know when to play it soft and when to play it loud. You've got to put feeling in the music. Yeah. Great. I never had thought about that. Oh, me neither. Anybody's got to have strength to pedal clean to one of them rolls, too. Like Charity now. She always gives out. She She's a playing long to last. It gets her slow. The music sort of drags, sort of. She ain't got no talent for it, it looks like. No. Granny, I believe Grandpa's just right about that, Emma. We want that music to sound right. Yeah, sure, yeah. Never know there was so much to it. Well, supposing we rented you and the Pioneer both, Grandpa, uh, rented the Pioneer and hired you to play it. How much would you have to have for that? Well, uh, that's how many nights a week? Uh, six nights a week. Monday to Saturday. On Sunday off. Well, that'd keep me up past my bedtime, wouldn't it? Hey, I'd be about 9.30 before you get out of there. Yeah, but you'd get to see the show free. See, we wouldn't charge you nothing to see the picture. There's 25 cents a night you'd make right there. Hey, right, doggy, that ain't bad wages itself, you know what? Well, it amounts to a dollar and a half a week. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, man. I'll furnish the piano and do the playing for four dollars a week. Four dollars? Well, three dollars then. Yeah. Wait just a minute. Let me and Abner have a little meeting about that. Come here, Abner. He's a little high, anyway. Yeah, but recollect, that's the only pair of pine in town that I know of. And that's a heap cheaper than buying one. Yeah, I reckon so. Well, I guess we'll take you up on it, Grandpad. I uh, just thinking, too, Rom. I'm going to have to bring Charity along with me every night. Couldn't leave her there at home by herself. You mean that you want us to pass her in free, too? Well, that's the only way I can get out of her night. Well, <clears throat> all right, we'll pass your woman in free, too. Now then, what's worrying me is how we're going to get down there every night. How are you going to get down there? Why, well, just walk down there like everybody else is going to. Well, I don't know, Abner. After dark that way, me or Charity, neither one can't half see to get around. I uh, just thinking, Mike, to get that nephew of mine to drive us over in his car. Why, yeah, sure, why, that's just a thing to do. Just get Luke to drive you over every night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that straightens that situation out. Well, uh, Piney, do you all settled in? <laughs> yeah, of course, we couldn't expect Luke to sit out there in the car and wait for me every night till the show's over. You mean that you want to pass for Luke to... Well, it just looks like there ain't no way out of it, Abner. Oh, me. All right, then Luke gets in for nothing, then. Yeah, if he can do it. If he can do it? What do you mean, if he can do it? Well, I don't know where Luke's going to be able to get out of a night without bringing his family along or not. See, that woman of his won't hardly let him out of his sight. Well, now, Grandpa, if you're hinting for a pass for Luke and his woman and all nine of them young ones, well, there ain't a thing of doing. I'll tell you that right now. Well, just... Suit yourself about that, Abner. Well, that's just carrying things too far. I was just trying to help you fellas out. It don't matter none to me. I can play it over at the house. Well, just play it over at the house, then. We ain't going to let the whole town of Pine Ridge in free just to get you down there by night. Well, now, wait a minute. Excuse us a minute, Grandpa. Come here, Abner. 
And he's just trying to get all his relays in for nothing. That's all he's doing now. That's what he's doing. Yeah, it looks like he's got us. Now. Well, so as you know that we want it, the old skin friend. I hate him to pieces. Well, we, no, now, wait a minute. We better close a deal with him before he thinks about that second cousin of his that lives over there on Bridge Creek and his family. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Well, it just looks like that we're going to have to bazaar the first two rows down there every night for the pine player. Well, that's a heat cheaper than buying one. Yeah, uh, well, all right, just do what you like about it. I don't care. Yeah. We could get him down a little bit, though. Boy. Well, I know it. He just got his head set. He knows that we want it. He knows that's the only one in town. That's the way that old man deals with him. I'll be quite easy. Uh, I wish he'd hear me. I just I can't stand him at all. Well, Grandpap, uh, me and Abner talked it over, and we'll take it. Uh, I mean, you're hard. I still think, though, you're a little high on your prices. Yeah, I know that damn well is. I don't think nothing about it. Well, I mean, like you said a while ago, I never had thought about it just that way, but man get up my age working for wages, just living from day to day, you might say. Why, he ought to have a regular income, something he can depend on in case he's laid up to where he couldn't work. Yeah. Now, there's that bad blame psychology you was talking about, Long. <laughs> if Lum makes many more deals like this, they won't have seats for the cash customers. <laughs> Just a minute, folks, before we close. I brought along tonight a letter I think you should all hear. It's from Mr. J.B. Gooch of Kingsport, Tennessee. He writes, I thought that you'd all like to know just what I think about your Horlicks malted milk tablets. I'm a fireman, and I'm exposed to an excessive amount of heat. I don't need to tell you that when a man is exposed to heat, he's apt to become tired and fatigued. That's what I like about Horlicks tablets. One tablet every so often braces you up and makes you feel keen and refreshed. I always carry a flask along wherever I go. Well, thank you, Mr. Gooch. Your letter, I think, speaks for itself. It's typical of many that we receive about Horlicks tablets from folks in all parts of the country for all kinds of needs. You can get Horlicks tablets, you know, in two flavors, both natural and chocolate, from your druggist. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.